Got a DMR radio? Need a code plug? Don't know where to start? Well, stay tuned. I'll see if I can help. Welcome to the Ham Radio Junkie with me, Keith. Now, over the past few years, there's been a whole raft of new cheap DMR radios that have come on the market. And because of this, there's more and more activity on the DMR networks. The most difficult part of using your DMR radio is actually programming it. And for this, you need what's called a code plug. Now, there are lots on the internet that you can download, or you can write your own. And if you want to write your own, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can do that. So let's take a look now at what a code plug actually is. Quite simply, a code plug is a series of parameters that you put into a computer program and then transfer across to your radio. It's that simple. Within the program, you'll see a number of these parameters listed, and this is what they are. The first one is your individual unique user ID. To get this, you will have to register. It is free, and I'll tell you how to do that in a minute. The next one are talk groups. Look at talk groups as a series of rooms where amateurs can all connect to one single place of activity and talk to each other. They are given talk group numbers, and we'll discuss that in a minute. Frequencies, well, that's the receive and transmit frequency for the radio and the channel that you want to operate on. Color codes, these are very similar to CTCSS and DCS tones on analog repeaters, enabling you to use two repeaters very closely, but not interfere with each other. There are time slots, time slot one or time slot two, and these enable operators to use the same frequency at the same time on two different time slots without any interference through the same repeater or hotspot. Contacts. These are call signs of your friends, fellow amateurs, or talk groups. These are a handy place to remember talk group numbers. Channels are quite simply all the settings for one channel that you put in place. And then a collection of channels is known as a zone. To get your ID number, just visit one of these links depending on where you are in the world. I'll leave them in the description below. Now I've discussed this in previous videos about digital mobile radio, that there are two main networks in operation on DMR. And they are DMR Plus, also known as DMR Mark, and the Brandmeister network. Each network has its own particular way of connecting to other repeaters, talk groups and reflectors. And for this reason, I'm just going to concentrate on the DMR Plus, DMR Mark network for this video. So when it comes to programming my radio, I like to use a particular order. The first thing I always put in is my own user ID, because if I don't put it in at this point, I'll probably forget it. The next thing is the digital contacts my receive group list, my channels, the zones, and then the scan lists. And this is what it looks like in flow diagram form. You can see the first part on the left hand side is my contacts. The contact consists of the talk group, and this is made up of the talk group number, which is normally TG followed by the number, and the name. The name is just there so I am aware of what the talk group is. The next thing is the colour code, then the time slot, either time slot 1 or time slot 2, and then if it's a private or group call. For the majority of calls it will be a group call because you want everybody to hear you. Once you have this information you can simply transfer it across into your receive groups and your channel. And once you have your channel set up you can add them to your own zones and your scan list. In this first example, the owner of this radio wants to set up their first contact as the worldwide talk group, which is identified as talk group one. To gain access to the hotspot is color code one, and this is set up in the software of the hotspot. To access the talk group one worldwide network, requires time slot 1 access. 
and it will be a group call as they wish to hear everybody and be transmitted to everybody on that talk group. We simply now move that information across from the contacts into the receive group and then the channel settings. And once we have the channel settings, we can move that across either into the zone, which is an individual setting for a set of channels, or into the scan list. The next example shows the operator setting up for the UK wide network, and this is on talk group 235. Again, the colour code access into the hotspot is colour code 1, and it's on time slot 1. Again, this is a group call, as it wants to be heard and received over the wider area. Again, the details are moved across from the contact into the receive group, and the channel, then the zone, and then the scan list. Now the operator wants to set up their radio so they can hear their own transmission coming back on the echo test server. To do this, they've set the talk group at talk group 9990, colour code 1 to access the hotspot, and this time it's on time slot 2. The other important thing to notice is it's now a private call, as it doesn't want to be transmitted to the wider network so everybody can hear it. Moving across, the data is transferred into the receive group and the channels, and then again into the zone and the scan list. Where the operator then wants to access a UHF repeater, they've set up talk group 1 on the worldwide network, and this time it's on colour code 3, which is the access code into the repeater. It is still on time slot 1, and it is still a group call. You'll notice the only difference this time is that the frequency has obviously changed to access the input and the output of the repeater, and the colour code has changed as the access to the repeater is different from the hotspot. So what have we learned from this? I suppose the biggest thing is that programming code plugs and writing them and putting them into your radio is time consuming. It's also quite complex. So by far the best thing to do is find one that's already been written and you can download off the internet specifically for your radio. Then have a look at it and if you need to alter it or change it, use the formula that I've shown you and you can't go far wrong. If you've got any questions about this, leave them in the comments below and I'll come back to you. If you've enjoyed what I've done, then give us a thumbs up. It lets me know that I'm doing something right. Even consider subscribing and hitting the bell and that way, every time I put new content up, you'll be informed. So, my name's Keith, my call sign is G0FEA, and I'm the Ham Radio Junkie, and I'll catch you next time.